Pro Playmakers. These are the skills that separate. Welcome to the Pro Playmakers video blog number six, practicing with multiple pucks. I'm a big proponent of having players practice with multiple pucks. What I mean by that is having them stick handle two pucks or three pucks at a time, putting one puck in their skates and having one puck on their stick and having them move the puck in their skates while they're moving their puck on their stick. Having a team that would do a normal passing drill, and instead of having one one puck that they're passing, we would have two pucks that are moving at the same time. Or having, say, three guys with a puck and one guy without the puck, and they have to find the guy without the puck and really read the play. There's a lot of benefits that you can have by practicing with multiple pucks. I try to incorporate practicing with multiple pucks with every group that I have and every player that I have from professional all the way down to the youngest players that we deal with. And mo most of the value that you get out of it is, is obviously harder. There's, mo there's, there's more elements that are involved when you're stick handling two different pucks. You have time and space that you have to worry about. You got to plan ahead. You're stressing the nervous system because you have to have multiple things going on. You're forcing your body to adapt. Just tremendous opportunity to make a lot of skill gains when you're adding more pucks and more stress to the skill. One of my favorite benefits of having players practice with multiple pucks is the ability to separate their upper body from their lower body. I'm a big proponent of having players being able to separate their upper body from their lower body. What I mean by that is when you see young players developing, what they'll typically do is they'll stick handle at the rate of their skating. So if they're going to take a stride, they stride and they stick handle. Then they take another stride and they stick handle. And it's in sync. And the problem with that is that when they get older, it's so important to have their upper body be able to do one thing while the lower body is working independently. And that's something that you have to train. Not every player does that come reasonably natural to. As a matter of fact, most players, this is a big struggle for them, is to separate their upper body from their lower body. So it's very, very important that you incorporate some of this into, into your skill development, regardless of what, uh, what, what le level you're playing at. And what, what's important is, if I was to make passes, if I'm going to make a pass, I want to be able to catch a pass and make a pass all in a smooth movement without having to break stride without having to stop my skates to can't catch the pause, then look and then make a play. That's an incredibly, uh, incredibly important skill as you get older. You want to be able to want to be able to do that. The other thing is to be able to shoot with your feet moving, which we talk about all the time around here, is being able to be deceptive and shoot with your feet moving. Now, you're not going to be able to do any of that unless you can separate your upper body from your lower body. And practicing with multiple pucks, is one of the best ways in which you can start to train that, especially at an early age. And even if you're older, it's something that you can, at first, it'll str you'll struggle with it and you'll uh, it'll be difficult to get a handle on it. But once you get a handle on it, you'll be surprised at how many areas of your skill that that will, will translate into. The other part that I think is really important that we don't normally talk about or I didn't really realize when I first started going with multiple pucks, but as the more I've started to experiment with practicing with multiple pucks and stressing my players more and more with multiple pucks, I started to see that maybe one of the best benefits that I get out of it is the forward thinking component. Forward thinking really means that you're thinking and planning ahead. So if I got two pucks and I'm moving from side to side, as I'm going this way, I know I have to go that way. So I'm going to put one puck over there first, then I'm going to grab the second puck and move over. So I'm planning ahead planning my movements so that I don't have one puck on one side and one puck on the other side. And it's that forward thinking, of thinking ahead, planning ahead, that's huge, that you can build that at any age. I do it uh, you know, with our youngest players, the six-year-olds, the five-year-olds, and I do it with the, with the pro guys, NHL players, we do that as well. And I really like the forward thinking component of it because I think it's a critical part to skill development and a critical part of player development. This is a drill here that, that we do with most of our groups and it's a, basically a regular passing drill that every coach at most levels would do. It's basically a three-man weave that they would go down the ice and pass and follow. Only instead of doing it with one puck, we do it with two pucks. So basically what would happen is this player here has got to move, uh, this player is moving. Now this guy, as he takes a step forward, he's got two pucks, so he's got to pass one puck here. Now this guy's got that puck, he carries the second puck, 
And now what he's going to do is he's, this guy here is going to move the puck, his first puck here. While that's happening, this guy's got to get him the puck. So soon after he passes the puck, he's going to be getting a puck right away. And that, that stress of the time is what I'm after. The ability to get the puck, know where you're going to go, have a forward thought that you're going to get the puck and you're going to move it right away. You can do almost two things simultaneously, the catch and the pass. And that you're going to have to do that at this moment right here. And it's at that moment, that's where this player has a chance to get better. And, it, and it's how he's able to do that. So he makes an accurate pass here. Now this guy gets a puck. So now he's falling. He now has a pass. He has a puck. This guy fills this lane. Now when he has it, he's going to again take a couple steps. Now he's going to move the puck to this guy. Well, soon after he moves the puck, this guy's anxious to get rid of his puck to get it to him. So you're constantly, as soon as you catch it, you're giving it immediately. It's very, very important that you're able to do that.